Uh, <laughs> I've never seen something so bad before. I thought the solo good was shit, but oh my goodness, what the hell were you thinking, Spedex? Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be testing the IS100 uh, Spedex 4 one ESC. Now this is a 30 amp ESC. It's rated up to DSHOT 600 maximum. So it's using BB2 chips. It's not BL Heli 32. It's a BL Heli S ESC. And uh, Spedex is pretty good. It's the manufacturer. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this before we get started. So this is pretty interesting kind of. I haven't really seen any 4 one ESC do this kind of... Uh, layout if you might say so first of all we are we do have the power already soldered on the power wire is already soldered on however i would highly recommend not to stick your xt60 connector all the way back here you want to trim some of this off maybe halfway through that's just me saying from personal experience now this thing is a little bit interesting if you can tell here there's a positive and a minus and a positive and a minus and what are these these are basically v bats so if you wanted to power up two things or more than two things on battery voltage you could just do that straight from the esc here so that's pretty nice uh for example if you wanted instead well this is this is where you would use this for for example right now i have an all-in-one flight controller for example a matek f405 and i did not want to you know it's, it's actually a pain to have two wires to come out from here because you want to give this the full battery power and then from this give to the flight controller because you don't want to take these two from one of the ESC pals on all-in-one flight controller because you get less current to the ESC and creates more heat inside the all-in-one flight controller. So you want to kind of avoid that. And what they did here is they gave you two paths. Basically one would be for your flight controller and the other one would be for your VTX. So I would use this for like a VTX and this would be for my flight controller. That's pretty cool. I really do like that. And there is also a 5 volt pad here for, since this has a 5 volt regulator on board, they also provide you with a 5 volt pad here. Now we also have this connector here, and they give you two wires. And they also give us a Rubicon uh, low ESR capacitor. It's not very large, it's only 330 microfarads. So it's, it's, it's not large at all, but I mean, it will help. And I did pick up a couple of those. So they give you this also. So for example, if you didn't utilize one of these, you can just stick it right there. And you know you're good to go right there it's pretty nice actually i really like that and you would have like probably your 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 all on flight controller probably have some kind of a v bat on it so you could just give that to your vtx and uh this is so this is pretty nice it's a 25 volt 330 microfarad rubicon low ESR capacitor and they also give you two jsd connectors they give you one uh i think they are silicone they feel somewhat silicone uh not totally but they give you this connector which uh, just has this type of end on it. And then they have like a servo type connector here at the end of it. So they give you two of these. That's very nice to see. All right. So you can also access VBAT via these here, via, via the connector. And you could also access the 5 volt and as well as all of the motor outputs. Now, if we take a look at the motor orientation, this is done via, uh, let's just say, beta flight configuration. Because this would be the back. Motor one, two, three, four, that's perfect beta flight. So this is how you'd want to stick it inside your quadcopter if you didn't want to rearrange wires or you don't want to go into beta flight resource remapping. Uh, that's how you do it. Now, for example, if you're going to be using a KISS flight controller, you're going to have to just solder your uh, signal wires differently. You probably know what you're talking about there, so I don't really need to get into that. But beta flight, it's straightforward if you solder it, if you put it into your quadcopter like this, and that would be the, f the front right there. So overall, it looks nice. It's a 30 amp ESC rated up to 40 amps for a 10 second burst. And uh, let's stick it on our bench and let's get testing.
all right guys so the, <laughs> the results are in and um wow uh, <laughs> i've never seen something so bad before i thought the solo good was shit but oh my goodness what the hell were you thinking spedex all right well let's get started so this is the spedex is 34 and one esc don't get it don't compare it anywhere near the single ESCs because those perform spectacular. However, this one's a whole different story, as you can tell right here. I'm just so sorry. This is just funny as hell. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So let's take a look at that. I don't even know where the hell to start. So we got a maximum voltage spike of 31.4 volts. That's, that's not good. A voltage drop of 3.6 volts. So if you had a 12-volt regulator for your VTX... You can say blackout, right? Not even on just a, with with a regulator for the VTX. A possible blackout even without a VTX. So yeah, uh, sorry about the chair. Um, so let's um, I don't know what we should let's compare it to something. Um, I don't have much four in one ESC test just yet. So we're gonna compare it to the second best uh, four in one ESC we've ever tested, and let's just take a look at this one. And uh, it's a Dell RC engine. So, what I'm going to do is, let's pick up the throttle noise level, and you can totally see what I mean by, yeah, this one's terrible, I, t I totally avoid it. I mean, unless we're going to add low ESR capacitor and see if, how well that'll fix that up. Here's the colored version, this is the Dell RC engine, this is this one. You can see this is pretty bad, this is really bad actually. Um, very bad. So yeah all right well let's go ahead and check out the simulated aggressive flight maneuvers all right so we're gonna go with simulated aggressive flight maneuvers for the dal rc engine uh this is what you want to see this is a pretty good form one esc test this is the second best es form one esc i've ever tested till this date this is what you really don't want to see and why you don't want to see this well these voltage spikes are you know the more the higher the voltage the more current it's carrying back into the whole system which is um not good at all. It's it's very bad. You could burn fry components, fry the ESC, fry a cap on the ESC, all kinds of crazy things. Especially if you don't have much filtration towards your OSD on your flight controller, uh, you could burn out your OSD, and that's known to happen, and that can happen. And I'm pretty sure we might get a couple comments down there like, oh, that's why my OSD burned, and he blamed it on the flight controller. Now, some is to blame on the flight controller, but... Um, Mostly it's because of the ESC's fault. The ESC is one of the most crucial component of a quadcopter, in my opinion, because a flight controller is just a basic flight controller. It's a gyro, and it's all it has to do is just maintain flight with its PID loop. But if you if the ESC is, is just crashing it or just, just hammering it with voltage and current and all kinds of weird-ass noise, it's not going to be able to do its job. And um, all you need, you know, motors, you can get the cheapest motors. So if they have a little vibrations, the flight controls will be able to handle it through some dynamic filters, some filters, and you'll be totally fine. But if you're having this, you're, you're risking burning, you know, uh, VTX. And that, it's rare. You could rarely ever burn a VTX, but like a camera, uh, your receiver even possibly, depending on how good the flight controller is with its 5-volt regulator, if some of this seeped through and burned, I don't know, what else in there. So... Uh, this is a pretty nasty result, to be honest. And just to clarify something, you know, if you don't, this could be a grounding issue, by the way. I've grounded the shit out of it, so it's not my fault. But I'm just saying, I see these, this is the type of things I see when you don't ground the ESCs, but not to this extent. You see a couple hiccups here and there. It's kind of like a desync. You know? It's weird. I cannot explain it. I'm still doing more testing to come with the data. But it's something of the same nature. It's not exactly like this, but you do get these weird very weird stuff happening and um yeah that's just something very important i think you should take note of uh overall you know um i personally avoid it how much does it even cost i don't even know how much it costs probably around 50 bucks not, not in my opinion not worth it at all um and um i think i'm just gonna end the, the, the video here there's really nothing else to say you're gonna just take a look at it it's terrible um and well that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope it was useful to somebody before making their purchase. And uh, if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And if I did help you, consider throwing me a buck or two on Patreon. That'll really support the channel. Or use the links down below before you make a purchase. That also supports the channel dramatically. And um, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.